This episode is brought to you by Coffee Mate. Coffee Mate is the world's biggest coffee lover because we love all the ways you enjoy. What? Wait, wait. Coffee Mate can't love coffee more than me. I'm a foodie. I went to Kyoto just for a nitro matcha latte. What? Oh, I have to finish the ad. Coffee Mate for the love of coffee. Welcome to Saturday Story Circle, always on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. You came back. You must like us. Or your podcast player could be stuck on Mutual. Uh, I hope it's the first one. Hey, one more episode. This is the last audiobook episode, and then it's all audio drama from here for Crimson Garnet. When Dwayne Bronze was given a very special gift, he gained an enormous responsibility. Now, when he raises the solar panels of his ring to the sun and activates the voice command, he becomes Crimson Garnet in Confrontation. Story by Nathan Caldwell. Copyright 2001-2018, Nathaniel D. Caldwell. Crimson Garnet and other related characters and stories are trademarks of Nathan Caldwell. James Ladd, come out with your hands over your head. James Lid is no more. Only Lid remains. I will not leave this place until I have my demands met. An officer to the side thinks and then tells his captain, Demands? What demands? I don't remember any demands being made. The captain also seems puzzled as he again speaks to the bullhorn. What demands? You never made any demands. He's coming out! An officer exclaimed as Led came out, hands over his head, and walks towards them, as the building he left explodes in a tremendous blast. Then Led speaks. New demands. Dispatch sits behind the desk as the radio comes to life. We have a problem! He's making demands! The dispatcher asks, Does he have hostages? No. Did you lose him? No. Then what? He has explosives. Oh. Now what? The officer asks on the other side. Now you wait, the dispatcher replies. I've called for backup. But everyone's here! Not everyone. Darn it! Dwayne Bronze shouts as he raises his ring to the sky. The clouds once again are disturbed as the ring absorbs the lightning that had just been created. An officer nearby glances up and says, Was it supposed to rain today? Led says to himself, Now where have I heard that before? The garnet rushes up by him. Hey, Coach Fancy Suit. He mocks. It's lead, boy. Just lead. Any last words? Yep. He smiles as his eyepiece rotates. This eye is a laser. Thanks for meeting my demands. Come with me, please. And if I refuse, what then? Matthew Bronze chimes up on the radio. I don't think you should refuse. He scares me. Lad answers the question. I blast you here and now. Don't go hero on me, Garnet. Not smart. You'd 
better play along. Dwayne hears the radio message and says to Lead, All right, that's good. Lead answers. Meanwhile, he is coming. The servant of the street boss proclaims, Success. Ah, yes, indeed. The evil street boss responds, Success. He turns, removing his hood, to look at himself in a mirror. At last, step one is complete. He is the only soul that sees his own face. To the city, all hope is lost. This hood, this hood only conceals my identity, not my plan. Later, Led approaches the street boss. I brought the garnet, sir. Excellent. What's he look like, Dwayne? Matthew asks through the calm. I don't know. He whispers back. What? Matthew is caught off guard. The street boss speaks again. What do you have to say for yourself, Garnet? One word, the Crimson Garnet replies. The vile leader of the Seattle Underground looked to the hero with amusement. And what would that be? The Crimson Garnet takes careful aim. Flash! Ah! Ah! The street boss moans as he is hit by the flash of lightning from the ring of the Garnet. Lead quickly responds to Garnet's attack on his new employer. Prepare to eat eye lasers, Garnet. With a loud whir, lasers come out of Lead's eyepiece. The next thing our hero knows, he's propelled to the ground with a thud. <laughs> the confused Garnet stays put for a second, trying to figure this out. Dwayne! Are you all right? Matthew asks. Yes, but don't ask me how. This is so weird. What do you mean? With another blast from the laser, the garnet is thrown, but again, not hit by the laser. Oof! It's like I was pushed away. Oh, that! What do you mean, oh, that? Another laser fires, and the Crimson Garnet's upper body shoots into a sitting position. The ring has a radar that detects danger. It sends small, harmless shocks to give the wearer muscle spasms. Very large ones, Garnet mutters into the comm. Right. Remind me not to ask you about the incredible speed. Suddenly, the dark robed street boss's voice is heard as he looks to the Garnet, and his now singed robes. Who are you talking to? The Crimson Garnet looks up in confusion. Yes, I'm still conscious. It takes more than that to hurt the street boss. So that's what you call yourself. Why a name like Street Boss? Isn't it obvious? Humor me. My spies, they see all, all the city, which makes me the owner of the streets. Garnet charges with his incredible speed, but misses, or so he thought. But to his surprise, he didn't miss at all. He passed right through the villain. Uh, you're not the only one with technology, Garnet. But the lightning, didn't it hit you? Only a hologram. I didn't know what you were totally capable of. I never take chances. So what do you think? Very impressive. Street Boss declares, but I'm sure you've shown all of your tricks by now. But have you? Garnet smirks a bit. Why don't you find out? Come on, take a chance. No! Matthew says through the comm. We still have the advantage. He doesn't know about me. Plus, I have some tricks up my sleeve.
The phone rings yet again in the Breezy Precinct. She picks it up. Seattle Police Station. Deborah Braun speaking. She sits at her desk at the station in her officer's uniform. Debbie, this is Grandpa. Plan A. But Officer Deborah Bronze is not confused, however. She knows what this means exactly. Party time. Matthew speaks to Garnet through the speakers. Debbie and I are on our way. Stay calm. Try to keep him talking. We're coming. Garnet looks to the villain. If I'm going to take my chances, let me know one thing. Hey, what's that? What makes you so sure I don't have any more tricks? <laughs> because of the laser aimed directly at your head. Led stands behind Garnet, ready to fire at the villain's command. Do you really think that changes anything? Dwayne bravely asks. Not really. That's why I'm holding the entire city of Seattle hostage. Just then, the door slammed open with a strong kick, then falls to the ground as Deborah Bronze in full uniform proclaims, Over my dead body. But Led had just that in mind. With a quick fire of the laser, it was about to be all over for Deborah Bronze. But quit thinking Dwayne had a better idea. No! With his phenomenal speed, he rushed and swept Deborah Bronze, his sister, off her feet. Thanks, she smiles. That's my job, he responds to her. Very well, the street boss says. If you want the city to... To what? Matthew Bronze appears inside the room. You can't win, street boss. Officer Bronze states to the villain. Street boss, you're under arrest. I will now read you your rights. You have the right to... But the villain disappeared with a poof. To do what? The voice comes from all around them. To remain silent. Did you forget about the city? <laughs> Weaklings. Well, she's about to blow. A clicking is heard. What? This thing isn't working. Hey! Crimson Garnet shines a bright grin. If you want to explode a bomb, you'll need a detonator. I found yours in the observation room and dismantled it. When did you have time to do that? When I rescued the officer. I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. I'm pretty quick, as you may have noticed. I have time to check it out and get rid of it. It's over, Street Boss, Matthew says. Ah, well, maybe next time. The voice fades away. Street Boss, Debbie exclaims. Come out now. Matthew looks to her. He's gone, Debbie. And so is everyone. Garnet adds, noticing the now empty room. But I have a feeling we'll meet again. A strong feeling. just heard an amazing production of Jimmy David Robbins. The music you heard was by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com using the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. 
Sound effects were from freesound.org using the Creative Commons 1.0 license. This has been a Protectorate production. Thanks for listening. And in case you're listening, Jimmy, (laughs) wow, what an amazing job. If you want a huge selection of audio drama, some of the newest ones out there as they come out, then do find Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network, which is the new home of the Sonic Society, the world's longest-running, largest showcase of modern audio drama. You can find us on the Sunday Showcase feed, or if you want to hear all of the day's worth of audio, then you can find it on the main Mutual Audio Network feed, wherever you get your podcasts. The Mutual Audio Network, where we listen and imagine together.